Hey people, what's happening? My guest today on the mixtape. I have to say, I'm actually pretty excited to be sitting next to this guy. He's really inspiring. It's Loki. Thank you. Thanks a lot. How you doing? I'm good. Welcome to the mixtape. Very good. Now, like I said, I don't know where to start with you. There's so much. You're doing a lot. Mm -hmm. I think people know who you are. You're quite yeah. an outspoken individual. But one could say that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start off with how you started out in music. Um, basically, I used to go to an open mic called Dil Real, that anybody who was about in 2003, 2004 would know about. It was a, a record shop in central London in Carnaby Street. And basically, the first time I went there, there was another guy there called Loki. So I had to battle him for the name and um, just carried on going to the open mic pretty much every week. Just honed my skills, you know, and it all just carried on from there. How did you come up with your name, though? Um, it was just something that when I was in um, college, like people used to say, oh, he's low key. And so I just thought when I was at the open mic, he was like, what are you going to call yourself? And I just thought, oh, low key. So but then literally, as soon as the words low key came out of my mouth, he said, there's another low key. And so then it just so happened that when I was rapping for my little slot in the open mic, the other low key came. And so I had to do what I had to do. And now, then. Like when I said that you're really outspoken, mm. you like to speak about not really the streets and violence over here in the UK, mm -hmm. but by, well, whatever's happening abroad, like in mm. Gaza, and you've been there recently. Mm -hmm. So tell me about that. Tell me about your work over there. Well, I think that as British citizens, what we have to understand is that our role in the world speaks for itself. Whether we, as people growing up in this country, are taught about it or know it or not, we, as a, as a nation, speaking as the British people, are responsible for all of the borders of the Middle East. After the First World War, it was the British that made the borders of what we now call Iraq, what we call Palestine, whatever. These were countries that their destinies were largely affected by the British government at the time. The British and the French government divided up the Middle East. So I think that as British citizens, we need to understand more our own place in the world because it's not other people who determine our borders and determine who our governments are. It's the British and now obviously the United States who have a huge amount of influence across the world. So when was it that you decided that this is what you want to rap about or talk about in your music? Because obviously I know that your, your dad's from here. Yeah, one side of my family is British and one side of my family is Arab. But it's not really, I don't want to make it about race or make it about anything else. It's about actual humanity, really. What I, what I make music about because it's what I care about. And what I'm saying is when was it that you kind of said this is, this is what I want to talk it about? It wasn't a conscious decision, it was just a, uh, a development as a human being and getting to the stage where I decided this is, I care about this so much that it dominates my thoughts and my mind. And so therefore, I, I'm not going to make music about anything else if that's what's dominating your mind. If what's dominating your mind is making money, then you're going to make music about making money. If what's dominating your mind is selling drugs, you're going to make music about selling drugs. Because you've always said that making music for you mm -hmm. is not about money. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. So what is it about for you? I think that ultimately every single human being watching this, you, me, every single human being in this room, is a unique creation. There will never be another you. There has never been a you before you, and there will never be a you after you. You are the only one. So therefore, if you don't make music which reflects how unique you are as a human being, then what are you making music for? People are making music to sound like something they really like. It's ridiculous. Make music which is you. Because when I die, I want people to be able to look at my music and say, OK, this is who he was. He gave us a real depiction of himself. See, that's the inspiring thing about you. You're not um, afraid to take that risk, to be mm. you and to be different. But now, talking about the UK scene, mm -hmm. about the music scene right now, what yeah. do you think of it? Um, I, think, I think there's a lot of very positive things about it. I think it's a very healthy time because I think people are realising that the young people are into it. 
But when I say what do you think of it, mm. what do you think of the music that's coming out? I mean, there's plenty I like, there's plenty I don't like. Do you think people are afraid to take risks and be different? I think that... I think that, um... Yeah, no, it looks like it's from the 1920s. I'm sorry. Okay. It does a job <laughs> right, though, so... That's all I need it for. But basically, what, what I think is that... The problem with people elevating musicians and public figures to such a level above them is almost a type of worship. And when you elevate another human being to such an extent, it encourages people to imitate that mm -hmm. human being. And what we have to be honest about is we have to realize that we live in times where something called cultural imperialism is very much at work, particularly in this country. Now, and not just this country, all over the world. The fact that England is a country the size that it is, and that English is such a spoken language. Yeah, How could exactly. one country this small have so many people around the world speaking it? It's not, it, you know, this, is, this didn't happen by mistake. Things happened leading to this. But what I'm talking about as far as cultural imperialism, particularly in music and um, in the music industry and in hip hop uh, in this country, is a lot of people are feeling the need to imitate that which they believe is superior to themselves and their own culture. And what we're talking about is what's coming out of the US. So we're talking about people completely carbon copying and imitating US music. I even believe hip hop music spread. I even believe the reason I started rapping yeah. was largely due to cultural imperialism. Really? Because at the age when I started rapping, I didn't start rapping out of a need to express myself or start rapping out of a love of the words. Was or it what you were listening to? And it's, we are trained as children. It starts when we are children to completely worship American culture. From down from the clothes that we are wearing to the slang we use to what we believe is beautiful and unattractive, this is the fact of the world. If we're talking about a country which has estimated a thousand military bases worldwide, it's not just imperialism of the military. And it's not just economic imperialism at work. There's cultural imperialism at work. That's, a, that's part of it. That's all part of it. It's all part of it. So I think hip-hop around the world is being... Uh, spread via cultural imperialism. So therefore, a lot of people are imitating what they think is good. Rather than having enough pride and faith in yourself as a human being to say, I have something which no other human being in the world has. I can offer something completely individual to the world. People feel a need to say, oh, that guy's really cool. I want to be just like him. But isn't that the safer bet? No, man. Because people don't like it. Because if they've seen it work for that person, people they think know, it's going to work for them. But it doesn't work. That's not how it works. I am actually a living example of the alternative. Because I'm, I'm out here being me with no mainstream support. And I'm not saying it like I'm Mr. Successful, but I'm more successful than the artists who are out there copying 24-7. Because nobody wants to hear that. Being a cheap imitation of somebody else is a waste of your own individuality. It's a waste of the person you are. Spending your life being someone else is just wasting who you are. And so, who did you grow up listening to then? You've got the Nazis, Gil Scott Heron, Sam Cooke, Marvin Gaye, people like that. So obviously you Tupac. listened to this music and mm -hmm. then you created your own sound of who no, you want to be. No, I listened to the be. music and like everybody else, I, I imitated it as a 12-year-old, 13-year-old, it stopped at 14. But then you found your own kind of... And I do, yeah, and I do think that as a hip-hop artist, as a musician, as a... But particularly a hip-hop artist, life is like an endless quest to find who you are and express who you are. And I think I'm closer to it now than I've ever been before. I think it naturally, the natural progression happened. But at the beginning, most of them, most of them talk to most of the hip hop artists. Some of them still today. Some of them still are imitating somebody else. 
Some of them don't even know they're imitating somebody else. They just think it's what's cool. Because to them it's just normal. It's just normal. Okay, on that note, we're going to take a break. So um, we'll see you on the other side.